one question has been answered. Does the time gate connect to other time gates directly? Answer, no. New question, where can I find one to get back? Hey, that's a depiction of, I believe, Wadjet. Sometimes there are many names for gods. Other times, things that seem the same are actually very different to someone more knowledgeable. Case in point, that may be Buto the Cobra Goddess, and I think that despite the Cobra appearance, she was a rather protective goddess, so we shouldn't view that symbol as a sign of danger. Cobras shouldn't be messed with, of course, but if a Cobra is on your side, uh, maybe. Anyway, point is, it's pretty. A mini temple, no, a pool. I guess if I wanted to wash my hands after the journey, I can just... Glory to the wind, for it is her breath that escorts you across the Nile. So you want me to cross the Nile? I take it you don't want me washing my hands here, though. Wait, hold on. I'm missing the point here. I haven't seen water do that since I got stuck in Riven and destroyed an entire universe. Oh, I should probably tell Alex about that journey sometime. Anyway. Hang on, there's something in that pool. P please don't whack me, water lady, but... Four buckets and a lever. Two buckets and a double lever, then a locking mechanism? I don't know. Ah, a pyramid. Now this is more like it. This is what I come to Egypt for. Where you find the scarab, you will find the key, is what I believe he said. I appreciate the continuing guidance these aliens offer, or at least push the Rapa Nui and now the Egyptians to offer, in the form of these strange disembodied messages. Ah, those dog statues. Anubis. So, what's in here? Alright, this looks like some kind of combination lock. I can rotate these parts here. I wonder what the answer is. There's quite a lot of the- Oh, this last one isn't budging. Oh, I wonder what the gift is behind here. Oh, well, whatever it is, I won't be getting it. Ten symbols, four locations, ten to the power of four, so ten thousand possibilities. And I can't even try nine thousand of them with that last one stuck the way it is. I didn't bring any WD-40 or oil. I didn't bring much of anything. I probably should have done so. Well, at least I brought my P90. So, if I need to shoot something, which is highly unlikely, there's that. Come to me so you can end this nightmare. What, what did he say? Come to me so you can end this nightmare? Well, one, you didn't stick around long enough, and two, no. Alex didn't mention this whatever. It looks like some kind of translucent terminator. So, um, I should really expect this, shouldn't I? I've traveled through time, and when you've accepted this many impossible things in one day, you might as well accept a few more, at least before, if I'm lucky, finding out Atlantis as a restaurant. Okay, let's just hope the Wadget boat is operational. Looking over the Nile, there's something over there, some kind of temple. I assume that's the Nile. It is water and we are in Egypt and the kind water lady told me it was, so... I think now would probably be a good time to read Alex's journal. What did he do here? So what's this giant stone thingy? Looks like some kind of rope and water system. Not sure what it is for now. On the end of this dock is a lever that I assume opened the gate so we can steal and borrow temporarily the boat. I am sure no one will mind. If Alex is right, there isn't anyone left except Phantom Terminator Guy. I can't believe he did not tell me about that. I guess it just slipped his mind. Okay, this lever is not working. Looks like whatever Alex did to fix this mechanism so that he could take the boat is no longer fixed. So let's take a look at the stone thing and see what we can deduce from it. 
right? I think I have a hunch what those symbols in the pool are representing now. I'm not terribly good with mechanics, but I guess that if this bucket was filled with water and pulling down on that rope, it would either give enough force or act as some kind of counterweight for the dock lever that would allow it to pull the rope and release the uh, boat. I have another hunch. If I want to fill this bucket with water, it should be under the spout. Well, that's less a hunch and more of the bleeding obvious. Okay, that lever did nothing so far. Maybe it releases the door letting water in. Where's the water though? Well, there was definitely water here, but it's gone now. <laughs> the time gate didn't bring us back that far enough. I can see the water line where it used to be. So if this holds water to be poured into the bucket, we need to put water into it first. I, I mean, I can cup it in my hands, but that's gonna take forever. And a croc might bite my hand off. Okay, I could use this. The pool symbols showed four baskets of water, then a lever pull, then two, then a lever pull. I like to pronounce lever and lever interchangeably. I gather the total amount of water needed to open that lock is six buckets. What's curious though is why it is divided into four and two. Perhaps I could just do three and three. notice that the water line is right at the location there was an old water line. Can I fit more water at once? If I can do that, I can just do six buckets right now and get past the whole do it in this many um, buckets of buckets. Wait, that doesn't sound like that's right. Oh, wait, what? Look over there! There's water coming out of that spout behind the reeds. No, I need that water. <sighs> no, there's no water anymore. There must be a fill safe to prevent it from overflowing. So we need six baskets of water total. But we can only transfer four at any one time maximum. Still though, there really is nothing stopping me from doing three and three. And I like using the same number. Okay, we are well within the safe zone now. Let's go back to the bucket. Well, the other bucket, not the bucket we're using to pour the water in. Okay, the bucket is under the spout, good. We don't want to lose our water again. So pulling this lever should send the water in. That definitely is weighing the bucket down. Hmm, it must be a perspective trick. It doesn't look like much. It probably is. The bucket is pretty big, but from this angle, it looks like only a small part of the top is even concave. Anyway, another three to go. I did three, right? Well, if I got it wrong, I could move the bucket out of the way of the spout and manually empty it. This looks right, though. Whoa, yeah, six is enough anymore, and that would probably have toppled it, at least spilling out the contents. The weight of the bucket should be enough, but I wish it weren't tipping over right now. Is it just me or did someone hear a large splash? 
And that wasn't enough either way. Oh, wait, no. Oh, no, the bucket was tipping. What if I'm trying to pull this? Oh, no, don't tell me. <sighs> well, bugger. This time, we turn this down. The bucket is straight. It should not falter this time. Ah, this time the rope fully retracted and we can set sail. There's a temple on the other side of the Nile, so let's go there. Temple. I am so glad that Alex got rid of that damn crocodile first. <laughs> okay. Knew it was a problem the moment I said the moment. Did you come out of the floor? What are you? Do I really want to waste ammunition on this thing? Yeah, backing up now. Okay, is it still there? <laughs> well, duh. Oh, <laughs> a croc in the water, too. Oh, is that a spear on that boat? All right, then. To the pain. That did about nothing. Every time he moves his head, though, there is a soft, fleshy part that appears near his neck. That looks like a weak point. Ooh, he reeled in pain. I feel bad, but I need him gone. Look, I hit you. You can go now. Okay, he is still here. Like most villains, he probably needs to be hit three times. There we go. Don't need this anymore. Alex was right. There's nobody here. Just a bunch of stupid wildlife. Oh, I'm so sorry, lizard. I didn't... No, you... No, don't ru go up the... Don't run away from me. I... Oh. <sighs> I'm a jerk. Wait, hold on. No, that's that electrical sound. Alex said there was a power source in here in the journal. Still, it sounds shocking just to hear it. Well, this does nothing. The ball is acting at least as a magnifier, possibly against some symbols underneath it, because the ones on the other side look nothing like what this is showing. These appear to be symbolic representations of Egyptian gods. But Alex said this thing had some mutable property where the head changed or something like a liquid. It isn't doing that. D did he break it? Did I break it? Or maybe it just needs power. Where's the power switch? I am looking for a power switch in an ancient Egyptian temple. Yep, I've lost it. Well, in here I don't hear it anymore. Too far. There! Oh, Alex's drawing wasn't just artistic license. It really is arcing electricity, with a column acting as an insulated wire. But this looks like an extremely lossy kind of transmission. Arcing electricity just isn't practical. Well, I shouldn't fault them too much. I mean, this is ancient Egypt. 
and they have freaking electricity. I think faulting their inability to transfer it without too much power loss is taking the nothing you ever do is good enough kid route, which is horrible. Okay, three symbols. The horizontal bar graph is lit up. Now, the pyramid is lit up. So maybe this means that is receiving power. Is that the pyramid over on the other end of the Nile? The one with the combination lock? Maybe there is something more local that we can test. Now that looks like a representation of that God viewer thingy we were just looking at. Let's go back to that. I don't know the technology, but I define that as working. <laughs> At least it's working better than it was before. The head reforms into the head of the god. Also, some symbol appears to be lighting up in the middle of the transformation when the ball itself shows the god image in full. I mean, this is technically mid-jet transformation, but look. Okay, I know a little bit about the Egyptian gods, so let's go through all these guys and talk about them. Osiris, the judge of the dead, basically. His symbol is a crook and flail, which even if you know very little about Egyptian mythology is likely instantly recognizable, and it certainly feels like it screams authority. Bastet. Her symbol is, I believe, a sacred rattle. Uh, the particular musical instrument is more properly called a sistrum, I think. I could say she was the goddess of good fun, as I like to put it, but most people probably see her as that cat lady who is a cat. Anubis, god of mummification and the protector of the dead, as well as having the most terrifying and badass name of all the gods. I, I sometimes waver between Anubis and Ra over which is cooler. Anyway, his symbol is that of a body, uh, presumably a mummy or in the process of mummification. Horus, thou art born of Osiris and Isis, and he is a protector of sorts, I believe, I think a sky god. His symbol is that of the Eye of Horus, not to be confused with the Eye of Ra. They are two different eyes. Right, we all come with pairs of eyes, I should clarify, from two different gods. Ra is the overall supreme sun god, whose enemy of sorts was Apophis, uh, who was a demon, not a god. Anyway, now that that is cleared up, a Horus is depicted as a hawk, and his mighty beak glistens. Kanem, pottery god, symbol is of pottery. Don't diss the pottery, it's sure it's simple to us and not as cool sounding as god of storms or sky god or god of the dead, but it's still rather important. Uh, beyond the artwork of it and the archaeological niceness of it, it does serve function, and I'm pretty sure most of us appreciate eating off of a plate or having bowls for our soup. His ram head horns look rather mighty and pointy. Thoth. If Kanum gives us the pretty and useful pottery, Thoth gives us another rather useful specific concept, writing and knowledge. I'd probably get along best with him. His symbol is of the caduceus. Wait, hold on, what? That's normally associated with a Greek symbol, although its inspiration may go further back. Regardless, I am not sure what this means for Thoth. It probably doesn't mean medicine, even if we wanted to go the science-y route. The rod of medicine is more Asclepius. That has a single snake, and it didn't grow wings. Caduceus is more modernly seen as medicine, but it was Hermes' wand, and from what I've gathered, does not directly represent that concept. Uh, then again, I, I wasn't expecting a time gate in Easter Island, so what do I know? Regardless, it's Thoth's symbol here. Set. Set is the easiest name, but also Setek, or my personal favorite, Setesh, are alternatives. Uh, to sum up, he is a violent traitor, son of a bitch. Horus never really liked him very much. The animal he is portrayed as here is a mystery, but whatever it is, it has one very long and powerful nose, which drips. His symbol is interesting. 
I actually don't know for sure what it represents. I recall reference to him sometimes as the god of storms. I guess the whole chaos thing. So it's possible that that, that is a rough representation of a cloud and some heavy rainfall or lightning. Or possibly that's his nose. I, I did say it drips. Sobek. This is the guy I drove a spear into three times earlier. The crocodile god. His symbol practically screams water to me, which makes sense. Uh, I'm going to assume he isn't too happy with me right now. I, I just got here and um, I already stabbed a crocodile three times, so I probably already angered a god. Uh, so the less time spent talking about him, the better. 